Hello and welcome. So now we'll talk about the hybrid exchange system with Office 365. We have a company on the left there, company.com. They have about a thousand users and they want to go across to Office 365. And you can see they've got their uh, complete on-premise system configured with a perimeter gateway for their mail flow. And they want to have the Office 365 as their future state. Now, what we would do there is the first initial thing is obviously set up an Azure instance for them um, with an Azure AD as uh, gets provisioned and they have the exchange online licenses available to them uh, which they can purchase as well. So once all that's in place, um, we now need to stand up some equipment inside the on-premise system. So the first thing we're going to do there is set up what we call an AAD Connect server. Now this particular server, what it does is it uh, takes the identities that we have on-premise and it populates those into the Azure AD in the cloud. So we would take, like with our example here, Fred and Joe would then have their identities synced up through the AAD Connect box, through the net, into Azure AD. Now once they do that, they would also have the password hash sync turned on. So that would mean that their hash from their, of their password in the local DC is also copied across to the Active Directory server in the cloud. So it means that now portal.office.com or login.microsoftonline.com is completely available to both Fred and Joe. They can log in and see what services have been provisioned. Obviously nothing's there yet, but at that, that point, that is the most simplistic fashion to allow them to be able to log on. Next thing we do is we run the hybrid configuration wizard. Now what this is, is the binding of the on-premise exchange services across to the exchange online that's going to live inside Office 365. So it will set up things like the federation, it'll set up all the, the transport rules needed for the communication, and it sets up the presence on both sides so they are both totally aware of each other and the mail routing and things can take effect um, quite nicely. Now, at that point, we are not changing anything at all for Fred and Joe on the on-premise side. All of that infrastructure is in place, but it does not change the working model for those existing users. That is up until the point where we decide that Joe, we are going to migrate him to Exchange Online. He's our first user to go. Um, now what we'll do is we'll stage him across, stage him up to 95%, and then in one particular uh, time block, we will say we're going to push Joe to the cloud. So Joe effectively becomes Joe at, we'll call it c.com for short, on this side, and he is now no longer here. Now what happens to Joe on this side is he gets a stub entry and a little forwarding address that's tracked on his account, which is company.onmicrosoft.com. Now, obviously Joe is still going to want to communicate with the outside world and the people which live back in his company. So what will happen is if we say that now in this scenario, Fred were to email Joe, what it will do is it will hit this little, he will email here, it'll hit this record here and go out to the internet through the perimeter as normal and make its way onto Joe's email box. Now likewise, if Fred needs to receive an email from Joe, so we have Fred living up here. Now remember before that all the identities are synced over. So when Joe decides to send an email from Fred, to, sorry, to Fred. He will email as you would do normally. It will then go into the Exchange Online system, which will know that the email of Fred does not exist inside the system yet. So through those transport rules, it will say company.com needs to go out into the internet, hit the MX record for company.com, come back in through this perimeter, and obviously back into Fred's mailbox. So we can see from that scenario, in terms of coexistence, emailing backwards and forwards using the standard GAL, the global address list entries, is going to work perfectly fine. The other function on the hybrid is for the free busy. So if we have Joe here looking up whether Fred's calendar is available to book a meeting, likewise it will go through the hybrid because obviously it knows that Fred is not inside Exchange Online as yet, and it will come back through the hybrid system and point to here. Now, 
Similarly, if Fred needs to look up the free busy time for Joe, it will know that it's going to have a stub entry, so it knows that it needs to talk through that, that linkage, through the hybrid, and be able to communicate with this system to work out whether or not he does exist in there or not. Now that all works because through the hybrid configuration wizard, what we set up on there was a little thing we call an MRS endpoint. Now the MRS endpoint is a mailbox replication service endpoint and it's the inbound entry that Azure or the Exchange Online uses to get to directly into these mailboxes. Now this here is, it's an HTTPS link. Normally you would configure it as whatever your EWS entry point is for your Exchange server. So if you don't have a particular route to present EWS externally, obviously you, you need to have that if you want to have that uh, tunnel through any particular uh, Zscaler or, or other sort of network appliance, that obviously can work. The end result is, is that the Azure side needs to be able to see the Exchange side and query it directly as an, with an EWS um, methodology. So in terms of Mailflow, what really happens here is that uh, Mailflow is obviously coming directly still into this perimeter system and talking into the exchange boxes here. Anybody that's migrated over will have these little stub entries and fire across to the system over there. Now what happens when we decide that we are 50 to 60% through a migration and we want to flick over the mail so the inbound route for the MX record no longer points this way but the MX record points this way. So any external mail coming in through the internet to company.com is going to hit Exchange Online first. Now Joe's very happy because it means he gets his mail very quickly. But what about Fred and everybody else that's left behind there? Well, exactly the same way for that mail routing. It will come here, it'll know that Fred does not have a mailbox yet, and it uses these transport rules to come back through the system and deliver the mail effectively here. So when you want to change the MX record from one side to the other, there is nothing to do except for point the external DNS entry at Office 365. If the hybrid configuration wizard and all of your mail flow is working internally correctly, up until that point, there is nothing else to do. You just flick it over and it will work effectively. Now, I do need to talk very quickly about shared mailboxes, because if you have a shared mailbox living here, let's suppose in this scenario, we've got Fred and Joe both worked in a shared mailbox, and you migrate Joe. He will still be able to access that shared mailbox through the hybrid system back on premise. Now, likewise, if we did migrate the shared mailbox across to 365, then Fred, would still be able, through the hybrid system, be able to see the shared mailbox in the cloud. Now, best practice will tell us, however, that you should always pick up the block of users together that want to have the shared mailbox access and move them all as one chunk together. It's best to have the shared mailboxes and the users in the same location at the same time. The reason for that is it's difficult to change the permissions for a shared mailbox when uh, you have on one side or the other. So if I had access for an additional user on this side of the, the equation here, accessing the shared mailbox, that is probably not going to take effect and work very well. Um, because the, the changes should really be statically assigned to the mailbox um, and then move the mailbox across to its, uh, to its destined location. Um, it can work. Joe will still access the shared mailbox and Fred will obviously once it's moved over, but any changes to adding and taking away people on either side of that equation is, uh, is going to be difficult to, for that shared mailbox to handle. So the best practice would be pick up Joe and, and Fred together and their shared mailbox and move them across. And that is exactly the same thing for delegates too, because essentially delegates is just shared access to an existing mailbox. Now, the, uh, the last point here is where to create new users in this particular scenario. So if we had a new user, which is Bob, and he joins the company mid-migration, doesn't matter whether mail flow is on one side or the other, let's, let's take that out of the question here. But if we, what we would do is we would take this little hybrid server that we have and we create a new mailbox for Bob on this server here 
but we tell it it's a new Office 365 mailbox. And what it does is it creates this here for Bob immediately and provisions Bob on this side. And that way, anybody that's left on premises here can still see Bob, but Bob is a brand new user in Office 365 and he does not need to go through any migration process uh, at all. So really, with that in mind, that's a very high level overview of what the hybrid system can do for a client in this situation. You can see it offers very comprehensive coexistence capabilities. And once you have the AD Connect and the hybrid configuration wizard configured at the start, obviously you do a lot of pilot testing with your mail flow and make sure everything is, is correct. But at that point, you are not affecting anything on premise. So that is a, a good place to be. But do your testing, do your piloting, and, uh, and keep the client happy on, on, under those circumstances. And this is the uh, video system I put together, which is straight to the meat. So please uh, uh, subscribe and look at the other videos that we have. Uh, the main aim of these sessions is to get straight into the technical content without all the fluff at the start. So I appreciate you listening this far and you have a wonderful day. Thank you.